Hi friends, I have many laboratory power supplies, but they all have one drawback, dimensions. In my videos, I usually use the Chinese power supply, which is on the set. However, I create my designs on my workspace, where is complete chaos and lack of space. Of course, the laboratory power supply is needed there as air, so it was decided to make an ultra-compact, I would say even a pocket-sized power supply. I must say, some of the technical solutions that were used in this power supply aren't ideal, but all the best were done for compactness. Despite the compactness of a power supply, it's quite powerful. There is stabilization of voltage and current with the possibility of adjustment. The unit can give out literally from 0 to 25 volts and current from 50 milliamperes to 3 amperes. Not bad for its dimensions. Links to all materials for the assembly of this power supply you can found in the description. Let's start with the box. I bought it long ago from China. The size is in front of you. The box is made of high quality plastic. The thickness of the walls is slightly more than 3 mm. The main problem was with the choice of filling, because I intended to insert at this small shell the power supply with the stabilization unit, indicators and some other details. As a stabilizer, I chose a ready-made Chinese model with a built-in volt ammeter. To say correctly, it's a step-down impulse stabilizer with a voltage and current adjustment. The voltage adjustment range starting around 0 and up to 30 volts, and the current is from 0 to 5 amperes. Although at maximum current such a model will not work for long without additional cooling of the chip XL4015, on basis of which it is built. On the stabilizer board, we have two tuning resistors. They are responsible for current and voltage regulation. I replace them with variables and set them to the front panel of the power supply. There are also LEDs. They show the mode of the stabilizer. They are also replaced and set at the front panel. Power supply. Yes. Again, the circuit of the electronic transformer. Yes, the electronic transformer in the laboratory power supply isn't the best option. I would say even the worst. However, its use is justified here. Show me another AC adapter with same dimensions which can give us about 150 watts. As a bonus, this unit practically doesn't require expensive components. It is extremely easy to assemble and works reliably. In the description under the video you will find links to industrial electronic transformers for any taste. I will not go deeper into the explanation of the power supply unit, since there were a lot of videos on this topic on the channel. Particularly, I was making a car charger using an electronic transformer. If you watch that video, you will get answers to many questions related to the power supply. The pulse transformer is annular, brand N87 from Epox. The dimensions are now in front of you. The primary winding consists of 90 turns of 0.5 mm wire and with inductance of about 28 millihenry. The primary winding must be isolated. In my case, the insulation is a fluoroplastic tape. The secondary winding has two identical parts connected at the middle point. Each shoulder consists of 16 turns of double wire with a diameter of 0.5 mm. To save diodes and useful space on the PCB was chosen rectifier with midpoint. The dual diode assembly in the housing TO220 has a reverse voltage of 200 volts at a current of 12 amperes. The diodes can be only 45 volts, but preferably more current. After the diode, the throttle is installed. The core is also annular. The material is most likely powered iron, is taken from the PC motherboard. The native winding was removed. The new one consists of 15 turns of 1 mm wire, and the inductance was about 15 microhenry. The tolerance can be up to 30%. Why do we need a throttle? The throttle is an inductive load on which the phase of current lags behind the phase of voltage. At the output of the power supply and in the stabilizer itself, they are electrolytic capacitors, which are charged with big currents, thereby overloading the power supply. Without throttle, power transistors can overheat even under small loads. If the electrolytes have a small capacity, the throttle can be excluded. By this principle, the throttle operates in any power supply with a function of a passive power factor corrector. Only, as a rule, 
They are installed mainly in the high voltage part. Naturally, transistor's protection is a secondary function of the throttle. The main one is to suppress the noise after the rectifier. Power transistors MJE13007 are taken from a computer power supply. The capacitors for the half bridge should be with a voltage of 250 to 400 volts. We also have a feedback transformer on the circuit. How it is wound, how to connect windings and much more is told in the previously mentioned video, a link to which you will find in the description. The typical electronic transformer, and this is our case, will not start without an output load. So initially, a load resistor was provided on the printed circuit board, which was later removed. The fan will play the role of the load, and the circuit will start after connection of the mains 220 volts. The printed circuit board was made taking into account the dimensions of the case. It turned out quite compactly and beautifully. The printed circuit board turned out quite good, but it was possible to use the JLCPCB service, and the quality would be much better. On this website, you can order printed circuit boards of any complexity, with prices from $2. There is a very large selection of colors. The quality of production is at the highest level. By the way, you will get free shipping for the first order. With the JLCPCB service, your homemade devices will look like factory ones. A link to the JLCPCB website can be found in the description. By the way, the power supply has no protection, but the stabilizer itself limits the current at the level of 5 amperes. I added an additional resistor which is connected in series with a variable resistor in charge of limiting the current and reduce the maximum current to 3 amperes, so that even with a short circuit, nothing happens. Power transistors and rectifier are installed on a small heatsink, and they must be necessarily isolated from the heatsink. Power components heat up only at maximum current. First I intended to add a fan, but later I noticed that heating is stable and doesn't go out of tolerance range. So holes at the box are enough for natural cooling. I think there is no point in commenting on further processes. The unit is ready. Now let's check what it is capable of. The minimum voltage is 1.2 volts. The maximum is 25. The adjustment is quite smooth. Now we will make measurements of the current. I chose three random voltages of 5, 12 and 20 volts. The unit surely gives the calculated 3 ampere in the specified ranges. And for skeptics, here are oscillograms of output voltage pulsation. You will agree that it is very good for a power supply of this level. Friends, that's all. I remind that the full archive with the circuit and the printed circuit board are in the description under the video.
Also, there are all the links to the components for assembling this power supply, as well as a link to the video with the assembly and configuration of the electronic transformer. Goodbye! With you was Kassian TV.